What's up everyone? We're coming back to you with another Pokemon TCG video. Hope you enjoyed the last one. Well, we thought we would come up with a next video. And for the idea for this uh, occasion was some tips and guidelines on CGC submissions as well as submissions to any other grading company. Uh, now, real quick, basically, I just want kind of wanted to share some recommendations on what I looked for for cards that I want to submit. And I have a few examples right here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, I'll probably pick and choose a few as to what what kind of mindset I use to decide what to send over. Now, really, there's no wrong or right way as far as what to send to get graded. Uh, at the end of the day, you're going to get these authenticated. They're going to be pressed, protected for life and their value will likely go up. Now, these cards to begin with do have a significant value, whether it's due to um, personal value, you know, sentimental value, monetary value. These are all things that are to be considered and, and they're all good. Uh, sometimes maybe you even want to complete a master set. Personally, I don't have a master set of any collection whatsoever, um, but I do try to fill out binders whenever possible. Um, as far as submissions, um, I'm going to just go ahead and show this one off a little bit. This is a Pikachu and Zekrom from Team Up. As you can see, it's a Rainbow Rare. It's also considered Seeker Rare or Hyper Rare. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, the reason I'm sending this one over is because this is actually my very first Hyper Rare, my first Rainbow Rare that I pulled out of a pack. I thought it was really cool. Uh, so at some point, I knew I wanted to go ahead and get it graded once I realized I could. Um, it does have uh, a lot of value because of that. It's one of my earlier memories of these recent sets. And also, uh, I like to look up card values on cardmaven.com. They pretty much give you an average of last sell uh, listings through eBay and other uh, resources. So you kind of have an idea of what it is that it's currently going for. Um, for the same reason, I'm actually sending over this Magikarp and Waylord. I always thought it was kind of a goofy combination, but... Uh, as you can see with the other one, this is also Hyper Rare, Secret Rare, Rainbow Rare, however you want to call it. Um, and also the set number. One way you can tell that it's a Secret Rare is that usually the card number is higher than the set number. This one's actually uh, 183 out of 181. Uh, usually that supersedes whenever it's something like that. Now, you might notice also that with these cards... Uh, I have them sleeved and also inside what's known as a card saver or kind of like a semi, uh, semi rigid sleeve. This is to better protect them while they get transported over to the company that you're going to get graded. Uh, but on top of that, you also want to properly pack them. Usually you don't have to go out there and buy any equipment. You can just use boxes you might have lying around probably from online orders like Amazon. A lot of times they include uh, like bubble wrap or those giant popcorns that they use to kind of fill in the box for that same reason so it doesn't get damaged. It's well pressed. Uh, and there's other details that, you know, they can use to, you can find on CGC's website as well as PSA or BGS uh, Beckett so that you can make sure that they get submitted and they're not damaged and they get received uh, well. Now, going back to the sentimental value, I recently got this Mewtwo GX. It's actually a secret rare from Shining Legends. I've never pulled this card myself, but when I saw it, I thought it was really cool because as some people have dubbed it, it's a Mewtube. It's a Mewtwo inside a tube, get it? Um, but it's something that I know uh, if I got these graded or some of these, uh, even if I had to sell them probably in the future, I can actually make some of my money back uh, and it will cover the cost of the full submission. So that way, even though at first it might seem like a large commitment, but you always have that possibility where you can flip those and get some money back or maybe all your money back. So, you know, it's just some things to consider. Uh, these are all relatively newer cards, um, but if you ever wanted to submit older cards, like those from Wizards of the Coast, WotC cards from original base set, Neo set, those, it's always a good idea to do so if they're in good enough condition. Uh, going back to the condition, or I guess now talking about it for the first time, you want to try to get cards that are as mint as possible. Uh, what that means is uh, sometimes you see a lot of listings saying pack fresh, pack fresh, but even a brand new card out of the pack is not going to be in pack fresh condition. Um, you want to make sure that they're mint, uh, that they have no damage, no scuff marks. The edges are nice and crisp how they're supposed to come. 
uh, when they're brand new. And also the surface isn't scratched up, especially if it's a card with hollow foil. Like, uh, let's take this shiny new, for example. It does have its own little ridges in the hollow foil. Uh, but these usually make it a lot easier to see wherever there's scratches or imperfections. It's very easy to see them, especially on older cards that have like that uh, hollow foil in the back. It's usually take like around this frame here. Um, if you do, it's okay. I mean, usually these are those that have sentimental value for you again. So it's not just all about the va the cost or the monetary value, but these are cards that matter to you or maybe from your childhood childhood cards usually are going to have some sort of imperfection but that's not to say you should not these are definitely worth considering to get graded um there are some youtubers that might say something along the lines of older minter rarer better uh kind of some of the things we mentioned here you know if they're older maybe they're harder to get um or they're in the best condition possible those are cards that you can always consider uh getting graded if there's maybe a set that you want to complete the way you have many graded from the same company or the same set. Uh, that's also another good idea to consider. Like these two, uh, the Magic Card Whaler and the Pikachu Zekrom, they're both from Team Up and they're hyper rare. Um, so even though they're not full set, they're together. And that usually if you want to uh, sell them or just keep them together, they are even more value just from the fact that they're, you know, kept together. Uh, so those are things to consider. And... There are different grading scales and costs and whatnot. We can actually discuss that in another video, uh, as well as this submission itself. This is actually um, gonna be my second submission. I just started considering what these might be. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, any thoughts, concerns, or, or suggestions, of course, uh, the video was made with that purpose. Kinda wanted to show some friends what are things that I go by to consider getting some cards graded, if it's worth it or not. Honestly, it's never not worth it to grade, it always is. Uh, but you wanna try to submit the best cards you have, the ones that you like the most, uh, and maybe some that are probably the harder ones to find because of course these will, again, up that value. Um, and it's never a bad idea. You can always keep them in display afterwards and they come back and uh, you know have your own little display if you, you'd like. So guys, uh, we're actually going to be producing some more content very soon in the future. So uh, if you uh, enjoyed this, we suggest that you or ask that you like the video. If you want to keep up with these, of course, you can subscribe and turn on notifications soon. It might take some time, but we're, we're working on it. So hope you guys like it and uh, have a good one.